It's ironic how Fanny Murphy claims the old firm is unwatchable when in reality his talk sports show is, especially when his baldy mug is on it. Welcome back to Fog Football. We're here today to break down his claims. Yesterday it was Simon Jordan bashing the old firm. Rightfully in my opinion, but now Danny Murphy is saying the fixture, the iconic fixture across the world, the Seven Seas, is unwatchable. What do you think of his immediate claims? Well, this guy has snubbed Celtic versus Rangers. He snubbed the old form as an unwatchable spectacle. And I think that is uh, pretty ironic considering this guy was pretty much unwatchable for his entire career. And he was snubbed really from any... Big clubs now. People will say he played for Liverpool. He played for Liverpool during a period where they couldn't win hee-haw, right? This guy was a bum in a Liverpool squad. Wasn't a good player. Could never cut it for England. Could never cut it as a pundit. He's one of those guys that seems to get jobs simply because of his name. And even his name doesn't even hold that much value. No, his name holds no value. He's the sort of guy that would make Joey Barton look like Steven Gerrard. He's just, a, I mean, yeah, he had that decent run with Fulham. They got to the Europa League final, right? I'm not going to downplay that. That's, a, that's, his, that's the highlight of his career, probably, right? But he was speaking on TalkSport, and he refused to sugarcoat his few experience of a fixture he once ador adored. He said, I'll give you a quick example. The last game they had, I put it in for 15, 20 minutes. I can probably be honest enough to say the reason I turned it over was because of the lack of fan involvement from each other. It just felt unwatchable. It was weird. I think... That's it. The needle missing. End of quote. Right. 15, 20 minutes. I think the atmosphere in the old farm. Obviously, I'm not denying, right? Obviously, the, the lack of away fans takes away from the atmosphere. But let's not kid ourselves. He's simply saying, oh, the lack of fan involvement from each other, it was it just felt unwatchable. Have you watched English football in yeah. the past like number of years? You know what? As much as a downgrade as it is not having a larger away support at the old firm games, it's still a bigger spectacle. It's still more... The atmosphere's still better than any English game. Give me an old firm match with just, like, 100% home crowd attendance than any English game. You watch a Manchester derby, or any derby for that matter, the, the crowd's dead. There is no atmosphere. It's a boring fucking game. It's for him to say that the old firm is now unwatchable... Makes me think that he didn't even watch it because it's just straight up lies. The atmosphere's still there, albeit it's just coming from one set of supporters. But, I mean, this guy is talking absolute shit if he can't admit that when Celtic went ahead, like, the fans were going absolutely fucking mental. And then when Rangers come back and it's 2-1, like, it's so tense and you can hear, like, a pin drop. And then, obviously, at the end, the fans are going crazy. Yeah, you don't get the back and forth between two sets of fans. but And I think it does... I mean, it does affect it somewhat, but to claim that it's unwatchable now, it, it, it's hurt the atmosphere, yes, but the atmosphere's still 100 times better than any English game. English football's fucking dead. It's tourist football. It's a, just for it's fans that aren't really fans. It's just people that show up to watch football teams play, right? Scottish football's still got the passion, still got the atmosphere, still got the rivalries. English football does not have that, so I reckon Danny Murphy's just jealous that our game is a hell of a lot better than his game. Yeah, you look at, you know, I'm not going to bash like the championship and League One too much. I think the atmosphere is still real in those leagues. But if you look at the Premier League, man, it's a joke. You look at United, Old Trafford, I believe it was City against United, the most recent game. City had a penalty against them and the United fans were filming the penalty. Like, what? Could you imagine an old... Could you imagine if Rangers got a penalty? <laughs> Alistair Johnston handball. Could you imagine if Rangers got a penalty against Celtic? Tavernier's lining up and the entire Celtic stand have got their iPhones out or Androids, whatever you use, and are filming it. No, they're bashing them. You, you dirty hun bastard. Miss it. You know, that, that's what you're getting. But yeah, you don't get that in England. And if, if two games happen to be on at the same time, I shit you not, I say, say you're sitting watching, the, if there's two games on telly at the same time, if you're watching the old firm game, and then you switch the channel, it's the Manchester Derby, it will, it will literally sound like a morgue, or a library. <laughs> the, the, the atmosphere is non-existent, and it's not because you've turned the volume down, it's not because someone's hit mute, it's because English football fucking sucks. Yeah, and that's the worst thing about it, though. they're always hypocritical in their words of bashing Scottish football. Like, he's simply saying here that, 
lack of fan involvement is why he can't watch it. Well, then, how, how can you watch English football? When there's no fan involvement? Yeah. I'd rather completely one-sided fan involvement than nothing. Like, you look at England... And know, the mad thing is, you look at a majority of these games in England, you're talking the average stadium, probably, what, 45, 50,000 people? Yeah, way more than our average. Yeah, you would not think that. No. And then sometimes, Scott, you know, you get Scottish games, even grounds that aren't, like, the old firm games, like, even grounds that maybe only hold 20,000. Like, the atmosphere's mental. Like, you think there's, like, literally 100,000 people watching it. Even in grounds that don't hold that much. Yeah, in English football, you, you look at Old Trafford, I mean, you could have seventy over 70,000 people in the stands and it, it just does not feel that way. The Etihad as well, fuck me. Watching Manchester City games at home is painful. Yeah, I mean, the, the best atmosphere at a Premier League game these days is Gary Neville going, ooh. That, that's as good as it gets, right? And, you know, this all just stems back when you've got, like, Steve Sidwell saying, oh, the the hatred and the rivalry between Liverpool and United, that's why it's the biggest derby in British football. What the fuck sort of statement's that? I, I, I would honestly say the best thing about English football over the last, like, five years is probably the punditry. But even that has went downhill. Like, some of the pundits they've, they've got in just do not deserve to be there. And uh, they're trying to be diverse. They're trying to bring in women from women's football that we just don't care about. I think back when you were getting Roy Keane like bashing De Gea and you have Roy Keane just you got And De Gea? Mika, Mika, I wouldn't let him on the bus. You've got Mika Richards getting on Roy Keane's tits, you've got Gary Neville and Carragher going back and forth. That's probably the most exciting thing, the most entertaining thing about English football. But like I said, I mean you look in recent years that they've brought in punt they've brought in women from the women's side and the the banter's not there, they're just not interesting, they're not good pundits. And then they've also like brought in just boring people, people like Danny Murphy. Aye. He's never on Sky, but he's always on BBC or ITV, like, isn't he, man? He's... Whether you like Chris Sutton or whether you like Chris Boyd, you know when you're watching the Scottish game and you've got those guys in the studio, <laughs> you know there's going to be banter, you know it's going to be entertaining. Aye. Whereas if you've got like James McFadden and Simon Donnelly, then you know it's not going to be that good. But that's pretty much what English football has turned into. So yeah, nah, Danny, Danny Murphy, take the L. Uh, th- this is a really bad take here. Most people would say, like, look at Chris Sutton. Chris Sutton's English, and it's not a biased thing because he's, he's played for English clubs. Why? Why would he? Why would he favour Celtic over Blackburn, for example, <laughs> where he won a Premier League medal with? But Same uh, with Hartson. Like they will openly admit that you can't compare the the some of the English games to the, the Scottish games. It's not even the old firm, even like the Edinburgh Derby. Edinburgh Derby's got a much better atmosphere than any English football game, 100%. Yeah, and I made a fed on it earlier this week about the flares. They were all saying no no teams in Britain should be using flares. This was like a Newcastle United fan saying it, or it was a City fan, because it's like cringe and it's weird. You should just have a pint. No, see, no, but see when you look at like when Rangers whip out the, fl- you know, and I, I defend it. Like I'm not day. a massive fan of it, but you can't deny that from a visual standpoint, it looks great. Yeah, and it adds atmosphere. And like, see, like, you've oh. got the players walking out, or whatever, and you've got the Europa League anthem on it, or whatever anthem they've got on, and you see the flares, and the, and you've got like the banners and shit, and the. In the stands, man. No, but you look, look, look when you've got an old form semi final or final. Look how, look at the atmosphere, the flares. When do you ever see? an English Cup final like that you don't you had the Manchester Derby final last year and the atmosphere was dead I mean it was absolutely dead you always just best atmosphere can't beat it English football's fucking dead in the bin Danny Murphy hold your L son and until next time peace